welcome everyone to another video today in this video I will be comparing two different thermal interface materials I have the cryonaut from thermal grizzly this is regarded as one of the very best thermal compounds that you can buy pretty expensive and then we have the Gillet solutions GC extreme this has been regarded as one of the best performing thermal interface materials that you can buy right now it has been out for quite a while now I never bought this thermal interface material until now so in this video I will be comparing the GC extreme up against the cryonaut and we are going to have a look at the difference and here we have the test system so I'm running an i7-10700 the non-k version and I'm cooling it using the Noctua NHU-12S as you can see I don't have the stock Noctua fan I somehow lost it I am unable to find it but uh, this fractal fan that I'm using right now on the heatsink is pretty good it has almost the same temperature numbers as the Noctua fan it is not obviously as good as the Noctua fan it is about uh, one and a half degrees worse than the Noctua's fan but uh, it still gets the job done I cannot do much I'm not going to buy a 2000 rupee fan for this heat sink for sure so this is it for the test system as I already mentioned running an i7-10700 and I'm cooling it using the Noctua NHU-12S and I have been using the cryonaut for about 15-20 uh, days so I applied this cryonaut to the 10700K about 15-20 uh, days back and since then it has been running pretty good so I'm not going to reapply it now the CPU is already having the uh, Thermal Grizzlies cryonaut over the IHS and as for the CPU itself I'm running the i7-10700 that is already deleted and I've used the liquid metal between the IHS and the uh, CPU die itself so the CPU is I mean the die of the CPU and the IHS is having liquid metal between them so we are going to get some really good thermal conductivity numbers as for the thermal paste I've already mentioned everything and now it's time to have a look at the uh, Cinebench runs that I will be doing but before that I wanted to mention one more thing uh, testing thermal paste on CPUs is a little unscientific in in a way that uh, you are having the IHS and below the IHS you have the dye and between the dye and the IHS you are having a thermal interface material in my case I'm using obviously the liquid metal which is going to give us some really consistent uh, thermal transfer numbers because it is liquid metal the highest possible th thermal conductivity you can get on these chips but I would have preferred to test these thermal compounds on GPUs because in, in case of GPUs you don't have any sort of IHS you have the cooler and the dye directly in contact and there you can test the efficiency the capability of thermal interface materials in a better way this is what I have been thinking for a while but uh, unfortunately I have sent my RTX 2060 on the RMA and I just cannot do that testing right now obviously in the future I'm going to make sure to include those results too we'll make a separate video on that but as of now we are going to test it on the CPU so as I mentioned I'm already having the thermal grizzlies uh, cryonaut right over my IHS and the CPU is deleted and I wanted to mention one more thing the core to core delta on this CPU is pretty good that means I'm having a really flat die and uh, the IHS is also pretty good I'm having a core to core delta of just 4 degrees on the max load temperatures I haven't seen this on any of the CPUs that I've owned in the past the core to core delta between all the cores is just 4 degrees which is amazing for a CPU which is having IHS over the die and then we have the cooler obviously so this is a pretty good chip for testing I guess these thermal interface materials and now it's time for me to show you a Cinebench run 
so there we have Cinebench R23 and I'm going to run the multi-core test So guys, I want you all to take a look at the core to core deltas. The max temperature on the first core is 70, second core is, obviously it is going to fluctuate. But uh, the core to core deltas are really low. I haven't seen a chip better than this when it comes to the consistency in temperatures between the cores. Yeah, temperatures are pretty high, I know. I am sitting in a really uh, hot room right now. The ambient temperatures here are pretty high. 35.5 C. Pretty hot. And we are having the Cinebench up and running. So the Cinebench run has completed and we have a score of 11,863 points and we have our temperature readings for the Thermal Grizzlies Cryonaut. So as you can see the core to core deltas as I mentioned is pretty close to each other. The maximum that we have hit on one of the cores is 84 and the lowest is around 80, 79C. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, take the cooler off and then we'll clean the cryonaut and we'll apply the GC extreme. So I ended up applying the GC extreme and it has been sitting between the cooler and the IHS. This is how it looks like the tube. camera is having trouble focusing but anyway you got the idea so now what I'm going to do is just put the system back on we'll plug everything so I ended up plugging everything up the system is up and running and now it's time to have a look at how the GC extreme performs So at this point it is about 2 minutes since my system is running. I will be starting Cinebench. the CPU is heating up 73 73 76 76 78 77 74 74 so yeah it is heating up pretty nicely mm, I think it is going to be about the same <laughs> there is not going to be a lot of difference I think and once it completes I'm going to come up with a conclusion So these are the temperature numbers that I've got with the GC Extreme and let's have a look at what the difference is. So yes, there is a very noticeable difference between the Cryonaut and the GC Extreme. As you can clearly see, all the cores were running 3 degrees warmer when I was using the GC Extreme. The Cryonaut was constantly running 3 degrees cooler except for the core 1. You can see the core 1 was hitting 81C with the cryonaut applied but with the GC extreme it was running at 83. So there was a difference of just 2 degrees on the first core but except for the first core all the cores were running 3 degrees hotter when I was using the GC extreme. So this is with a deleted i7 as I already mentioned 
and uh, i think the margin is going to grow a little more if i would have tested this on a gpu but in the upcoming video i will be comparing the cryonaut against the uh, noctua's very popular nth1 it is also a really good very high performing thermal interface material and i'm very curious to see what sort of a thermal difference is between the two pastes so this is it for this video. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you like the content, please subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or queries, please feel free to use the comment section down below and I'll make sure to get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one.